potential powerful storm system that we'll be tracking across the United States here as we head towards the 3rd through about the 6th of March, bringing all hazards possible, severe weather, blizzard potential, and even bombogenesis potential in some areas. Now, before we begin, click the subscribe button below. If you like daily forecast breakdowns, educational, much more depth than you would see on TV. And we also go much longer range into the future as well. So you get a sneak peek on some of the upcoming events. So we're going to do this day by day. And I'm going to show you how this storm system evolves and who's going to get what. So let's get right into it now. So this is around the third. Now what we're looking at here is the jet stream up in the 500 millibar range. This is near and below the jet stream. And this is important because... This is the low pressure system right here on the 3rd. This is Tuesday, March 3rd. Now, you see where all that flow is at. That's where our uh, our energy for uh, these storm systems is going to occur, especially where it spreads out. That's going to cause divergence in the upper atmosphere, which kind of stretches things out up there, and it brings lifting uh, below it. So this is where we're going to want to watch right here is this low pressure upper level low and as it tracks to the east and you can see winds up there 90 miles an hour in some areas. Now as we head towards Wednesday this moves to the east and you can see it really strengthens. Now when this energy behind it if it can connect to the front side and it can do it faster there could be a very powerful storm system here in the Midwest. Right now there's a lot of front side flow but not a whole lot of backside flow. At least it's a little bit farther back. Uh, we want that a little bit closer, and I'll show you what that means in a second. But you can see it connects finally as we head towards Thursday. So the timing of that will be critical in terms of severe weather for the southeastern United States and for uh, winter storm potential up here in the northeast. Uh, but we'll uh, track this all across the country here in a second. And you can see it really gets going on Thursday. So let's look at the uh, the actual storm and you know what we're looking at now is the precipitation and uh, the fronts and all that and uh, I'll show you kind of how to how this works here and you know you see the storm system now this is on uh, Tuesday the 3rd of March your your lows down here kind of near Texas there's a lot of warm air so you, these black lines are isobars the pressure lines and they circulate around the low counterclockwise and then an uh, opposite direction with highs so the winds kind of follow those lines you can see south winds out here so plenty of moisture coming up from the Gulf got a warm front kind of extending right around here and then a cold front down there and, and uh, you know where those south winds merge with that warm front that's where your uh, best moisture best thunderstorm potential is going to be meanwhile a little low pressure system out here in the north eastern united states and then some flurries out here in the northwestern united states but watch as we head towards uh tuesday afternoon to wednesday this low moves to the east and the cold front comes down there's your warm front there's going to be a severe weather setup this uh with this powerful jet stream with 90 mile an hour winds up there and then you got moisture coming out of the south uh, below it you get this cross wind flow so you get southwest above and then south below that creates spin in the atmosphere but for potential severe storms you know hail tornadoes supercells we're gonna have to watch that and we'll look at that in a second but that would impact parts of you know Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Georgia around the Tuesday into Wednesday. This uh, overnight actually redevelops a new low begins to form. As I was talking about, as that jet stream, that backflow, that jet stream merges with the front side, it really starts getting cranking as it heads towards the southeast, mid-Atlantic, northeast region. As we head towards Wednesday, the 4th, you can see the low pressure system here and a very nice cold front now and uh, kind of a dying low pressure up here. A new one is forming down farther southeast. This is going to be the big one, according to the GFS. And this looks uh, like some pretty good severe weather for uh, all the southeastern United States. You can see that line, probably a squall line, with southwest winds out ahead of it. And uh, that extends all the way from Florida all the way northeast up to about Pennsylvania. Now, you typically don't get severe weather north of the low this time of year this far north. Uh, this time of year, the instability and moisture is usually best farther south along the cold front of the low pressure system. Uh, down in the mid-Atlantic region, Dixie Alley, southeastern United States. So that's probably going to be the main threat as we head towards uh, Wednesday. As you can see, this moves to the north Wednesday afternoon into Thursday morning. And all of a sudden, like I said, when those lows merge, you get some bombogenesis potential out here. Let's zoom in real quick to the northeastern United States, and I'll show you what the heck that means 
you know, as we head towards uh, Tuesday into Wednesday here, and you can really see that this low it goes from a 983, and then it goes to a 954. Now I go back to national because it's not the best view, but you can see uh, it goes all the way down to a 983. That's Thursday or Wednesday at 7 p.m. Then it goes down to a 957 millibar at Thursday around 6 a.m. or so. What that's essentially meaning is it tr it's dropping by you know close to 30 millibars here in a only a 12-hour period. Now, bombogenesis, when that occurs, you get a 24 millibar or greater drop in a 24-hour period. Obviously, we're getting that in, in only a 12-hour period, and that occurs right around Maine or so. So parts of uh, Canada, you know, maybe Quebec, uh, New Brun all the way out to New Brunswick, Ontario, cities included, you know, New York City, I, I wouldn't think would be in this, but probably to the north of that, Maine would be uh, under the gun. This is going to be a, a really interesting storm system, particularly for Canada in the interior northeastern United States, kind of where that storm track has been all season, you know, that the storms have really strengthened once they get past the Great Lakes and kind of move north and really go uh, really strong out here. Now, typically that does happen a lot, but this winter it's been happening uh, quite a bit. So we're definitely going to have to watch that uh, for this region right here. Now, I, I do think that these the trend this winter has been to move these a little bit farther north than what the GFS has been saying. Uh, but that's definitely going to be something we want to watch. Blizzard potential as we head towards Thursday. So very powerful system, a 957. That would be several inches of snow for parts of Maine, Canada, and the like. And obviously after that, then we get a high move and, and it's a lot uh, colder. Now, we're going to look at severe weather potential here in a second. I want to show you the Canadian computer model, the track on this one. You can see it's a lot farther to the east or the west. Severe weather probably going to be impacting on Wednesday here. Parts of the plains from Missouri down to Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Louisiana, maybe Tennessee. That would be a, a that's where your severe storms are going to be, your low pressure systems here. So your main severe weather threat going to be off to the south and east. Behind it, not a whole lot of cold air. The cold air, the 540 line is all the way out here still. So it's a little bit delayed. But you see that gradient right there in that pressure line. Uh, that typically means you're going to get some advancing of cold air. And watch what happens here as we head towards Wednesday into Thursday. That advances, that 540 line moves south. Finally get some cold air advection. That advances around Thursday morning, and this thing really gets going in the Great Lakes region, Midwestern region. So snowstorm out there, severe weather potential in the southeast. So you can see the Canadian and uh, the GFS much different. Then the Canadian also has another piece of energy. There's two pieces of energy I checked up in the upper levels, and they merge at different times. So this is going to be a big, uh, big thing to look for because it actually has a second storm coming out in the Carolina. So big differences, but nonetheless, the models have been very, very, very consistent. And, you know, I made a video a few days ago about this, about a big change here, probably a powerful storm system kind of tracking within this region. Now, everyone's not going to get this. This is going to change. But if I were to put odds on it, it looks like the low will probably track kind of in this line right here with your greatest snow potential being up in Canada and maybe uh, up into Michigan and the Great Lakes region, maybe extending back out into Maine. it would probably be where your best bet is right now. So a little bit farther south than what the Canadian's saying, but a little bit farther north than what the GFS is saying. Kind of been the track this winter. But you can see it's a very powerful storm system, blizzard potential, very, very strong east-northeast winds up on the north side of this thing uh, with this Canadian model. Obviously, details will change, but this is... Uh, looking like we'll be making more videos on these big storms coming up here around the third through the sixth. I want to show you um, just how much the snow this model is actually putting down. And, you know, with the system, it's definitely putting down a, a foot plus where the heaviest snows will occur. This kind of has that potential, these uh, strong cutoff systems with comma head type appearances. But again, snow amounts for exact locations way too far to be talking about that at the moment. But the threat is there for a powerful storm system, at least for some people. Now, let's look at the uh, instability real quick. I want to show you the moisture, and then we'll show you the instability for this severe weather. And this is going to be Tuesday and Wednesday. Your main instability and moisture is going to be tracking around those blue areas. You see those 60-degree dew points, south winds. That's where your best threat is going to be on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And you can see mostly the southeastern United States kind of 
like the past few events in that region. Uh, the instability, not overly strong. If we look at that real quick, you know, surface base cape, nothing crazy. This is uh, going to be your instability. But 500 to maybe even 1500 in some areas, Tuesday into Wednesday, goes really uh, south of uh, the Carolinas, down south of Tennessee, Arkansas, and southern Texas, and then into Florida. That would be your best threat for severe weather. Uh, anything over 500 with really that strong jet stream and that powerful storm system, that will, that'll spark off a few severe storms and uh, all hazards possible with that type of wind shear. If you look at the, um, the let's go to the GTPS, it's a little bit different. It actually has more instability. Now it doesn't, they don't have an option to show instability on the map, but what we can do is actually look at a sounding. And a sounding is a 3D layer of the atmosphere and we'll click on this day. It's very impressive on the Canadian on Wednesday, and it actually has severe weather all the way up to Missouri. We'll click on Arkansas here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a vertical sounding of the atmosphere. So essentially what it means is I clicked on one point, and this is the surface, and this is way up high in the jet stream, above the jet stream towards the stratosphere. And this is kind of just measuring the vertical, and you can see the winds change with height. And what we can do is we can actually see the cape right here. That's the instability it stands for. And you can see surface level cape 882. And so that's plenty of instability for severe weather. Now, it's not a ton, but with that type of jet stream up there, that'll be enough for some severe weather. And you can see that the possible hazard type is tornado for that region. So you can see just enough shear and instability in that area. So we'll have to watch the Dixie Alley region. Like I said, I think anywhere from about the Carolinas, Tennessee, Arkansas, Texas, and then south of that line into northern parts of Florida. Severe weather possible on Tuesday through about Thursday, uh, one of those days. And then the best winter potential will be from Maine, you know, maybe all the way up to the far northern part of uh, New York and Michigan, maybe parts of Wisconsin, and definitely up into Canada. That would be your best winter storm potential. Again, track could change here. All it takes is just a little bit of cold air, a little bit farther south. So we'll definitely be making updates on this video. So stay tuned for that. Again, subscribe below. Click this video up here. It's a 10-year radar time lapse that I created from 2010 to 2020. Radar in two hours. So check that out. You can check all of your favorite storm events. Comment below if you like uh, you know, severe weather or snowstorms. So get something going down there. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. See you guys later.